Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Evans, in December of 2012, the FDIC issued a comprehensive report on community banks, and some of the findings of that report suggest that bank consolidation has very real consequences for the economy uh, because community banks and small banks play such a vital role in the local source of credit. Um, yet some industry observers are estimating that nearly 2,000 banks will need to be acquired or to sell their assets in the aftermath of the crisis. Others speculate that 90% uh, or more of small banks with less than $1 billion in assets uh, are not likely to survive. Uh, first of all, did you agree with this assessment that the smaller banks still face a very serious potential of, of not surviving in large numbers? And what can the FDIC do, given the causes that you've just identified and discussed with us uh, of so much of the failure? What can the FDIC do to ensure that community banks, especially in rural areas, do survive? Communities. I would say our work here is fairly limited that would allow me to uh, answer this question. But I, I will note that um, as of um, the end of the first quarter of 2013, there were 612 uh, banks on the problem bank list. So that indicates that there are still issues that, that need to, to be worked through. I think some of the issues re with respect to community banks where the examiners could play a, a more significant role is determining what it really means when you know concentration thresholds are exceeded, and they say it, it requires additional scrutiny or heightened scrutiny. What, is, what does that mean? Because it, it was really those um, significant concentrations that provided, um, contributed to the problems that we saw across the board. And again, um, just in regula regu regulators in general, I mean, there are a number of issues we should be thinking about in terms of regulatory burden and, and, and right-sizing regulations 